Hello everyone. Today I am going to talk about the chemiosmotic hypothesis. And it is in continuation of my second lecture, which was on cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. So um, today in chemiosmotic hypothesis, I am going to tell you that this hypothesis was put forward to explain why, uh, how ATP is synthesized during the cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Means what was the mechanism behind its synthesis? So I am not sharing my screen. Okay. So welcome to Ritika's online teaching academy. Today, the topic of my lecture is chemiosmotic hypothesis and is lecture three. So before going to the topic in detail, first we will, I want to tell you that we have already studied the structure of the chloroplast and recall that photophosphorylation, both cyclic as well as non-cyclic photophosphorylation occurs in the thylakoid membrane. Okay, so these are the stacks of thylakoids and full stack is called as a granum. So I am elaborating this structure here you can see these green disc of thylakoids. So one disc you can see that inner green part is called as a thylakoid lumen, which is surrounded by the double layered thylakoid membrane. Okay, and this part is what lamella or we can say stroma lamellae here, this part. So as we know that both photosystem one and photosystem two are embedded in the thylakoid membrane, which are responsible for cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation during which ATP molecules are synthesized. So how these ATP molecules are synthesized, we will study by uh, chemiosmotic hypothesis. So this one disc of thylakoid is now elaborated here in this picture and the double layered membrane is showing the presence of PS2 and PS1 and the electron transport chain components as well as an enzyme ATP synthase. So this membrane in which both PS1 and PS2 are embedded now are going to show how the ATP is synthesized. So as we know that the reaction center P680 is of PS2, when it gets excited by the light energy, its reaction center releases an electron, which is accepted by the primary acceptor of electron transport chain. Okay. Now this electron, uh, uh, primary acceptor of electron transport chain is located on the outer side of the thylakoid membrane. When it transfers its, its electron, to the first component of electron transport chain, it transfers its electron, not to an electron carrier, but also a proton acceptor, or you can say a proton donor. Okay, so here plastoquinone is shown, which is accepting electron from the primary acceptor of uh, PS2. So it gets reduced to PQH2 or plastoquinone. During this process, it is getting a proton from the, from the stroma of the chloroplast. This outer white colored portion is the stroma of the chloroplast. And this inner white portion is the lumen of the thylakoid. And these two layers are showing the thylakoid membrane in which this PS2 and PS1 are embedded. Okay, so now this plastoquinone is acting as a proton carrier and electron transporter. So this plastoquinone, when transfers electron to the cytochrome B6F, this cytochrome B6F then accepts electron from the plastoquinone, that tra it transports proton, which is accepted from the stroma of the chloroplast into the lumen of the thylakoid and transfers the electron to the next electron carrier, which is plastocyanin. Then plastocyanin 
transfers electrons to the p700 or ps1 photosystem this p700 also gets excited by the light and releases the electron so it is accepting electron from the plastocyanin as well as getting excited by the incidence of light release another electron these ele this electron pair is accepted by the peridoxin which is an electron carrier of electron transport chain of ps1 this peridoxin in the presence of peridoxin reductase nadp reductase enzyme reduces nadp plus into nadp h so this nadp plus also requires protons along with the electrons to get reduced so nadp plus gets this proton from the stroma of the chloroplast so nadp plus plus h plus get reduced into the nadp h in the presence of peridoxin nadp reductase enzyme so as we know that when the electron transfers from the plastoquinone to the cytochrome b6 and from cytochrome b6 to plastocyanin during this process atp molecule is synthesized so how this atp is generated there is another enzyme which is called as atp synthase which is also they present in the thylakoid membrane this atp synthase molecule has two components one is the intrinsic component which is called as the cf0 or catalytic f0 particle which is embedded in the thylakoid membrane why we are telling it as intrinsic protein because this part is embedded in the thylakoid membrane and the another part which is on the outer side of the thylakoid membrane or of the outer membrane of thylakoid is called as the extrinsic protein and it protrudes out into the stroma of the chloroplast and is called as the f1 particle okay so this atp synthase molecule provides a channel for the protons to get released into the stroma again when the protons are getting extracted from the stroma and released into the lumen of the thylakoid in that process there is increase in the proton concentration inside the lumen of the thylakoid and decrease in the proton concentration in the stroma of the chloroplast so hence it is creating a electrochemical gradient or proton gradient so there is a high proton gradient <coughs> in the thylakoid lumen while low proton gradient in the stroma of the chloroplast but this gradient is broken down with the help of the enzyme which is called as the atp synthase so how this proton gradient is broken down for that this f0 particle which is providing a channel for the protons for the protons which are getting accumulated in the lumen of the chloroplast to get transferred again back into the stroma so hence it breaks down the that proton gradient which is being generated by the transportation of the proton across the thylakoid membrane so when this proton channels through the f0 particle into the stroma of the chloroplast it provides enough energy for the change in the configuration of the f1 particle of the atp synthase molecule when the configuration of f1 particle gets changed it causes the addition of inorganic phosphate to the adp molecule to synthesize atp molecule so in this way atp molecules are synthesized during the cyclic and non cyclic photophosphorylation so this is all about the chemi osmotic hypothesis now again we can summarize the whole thing in the form of following points so chemi osmotic hypothesis has been put forward to explain the mechanism of atp synthesis in chloroplast next is this atp synthesis is linked to the development of a proton gradient across a thylakoid membrane as we have seen in the picture next proton accumulation occurs in the thylakoid lumen 
the how this proton gradient develops splitting of water yes one more point is there in this picture we are seeing that protons are transferred from the uh, stroma inside the thylakoid lumen but also recall that we are getting protons also from the photolysis of water so when this p680 accepts or gets excited to release an electron it gets converted into a strong oxidizing agent and results into the splitting of water molecule into oxygen and proton and this splitting of water is also occurring in the lumen of the thylakoid so along with the protons which is getting transferred from the electron transport chain into the lumen of the thylakoid we are getting protons also from the photolysis of water so this is the main reason why there is proton accumulation or increase in the amount of protons inside the thylakoid lumen and creates a proton gradient there high proton gradient there but this proton gradient is broken down by the f0 particle of atp synthase now proton gradient development splitting of water molecule takes place in the inner side of the membrane which leads to the accumulation of protons or hydrogen ions within the lumen of the thylakoid as electron moves through the photosystem protons are transported across the membrane as we have seen there that when the electrons are transported through the electron transport system protons are getting transferred from the stroma of the chloroplast into the lumen of the thylakoid next is proton transportation is due to the fact that the primary acceptor of electron which is located towards the outer side of the membrane transfers its electron not to an electron carrier but to an hydrogen carrier as we have seen there plastoquinone which is getting reduced to plastoquinol by accepting two protons from the stroma of the chloroplast later on it transports its electron to the cytochrome b6 and also transports the proton into the lumen of the in uh, of the thylakoid has this molecule removes a proton from the stroma while transporting an electron so when electron hydrogen carrier molecule passes on its electron to the electron carrier on the inner side of the membrane the proton is released into the inner side or we can say lumen side of the membrane the nadp reductase enzyme is located on the stroma side of the membrane where we have seen this nadp reductase enzyme it is the part of the photosystem one in non cyclic photophosphorylation where nadp gets reduced by accepting proton from the stroma into the nadph molecule so along with the electrons that come from the acceptor or electrons of ps1 protons are necessary for the reduction of nadp plus to nadph plus h plus and these protons are also removed from the stroma so we can say that in the chloroplast protons in the stroma decrease in number while in the lumen there is accumulation of protons and this creates a proton gradient across the thylakoid membrane as well as there is a decrease in ph of the lumen as we know that when the hydrogen concentration increases ph gets reduced and when proton uh, concentration decreases ph gets increased so it is a vice versa next proton gradient not developed is broken down due to the movement of protons into the stroma with the help of atp synthase so that proton gradient which is generated by the accumulation of protons in the thylakoid lumen is broken down with the help of another enzyme atp synthase which is responsible for the synthesis of atp it provides its f0 part is providing a channel for the proton to get transport back into the stroma of the chloroplast hence that proton gradient gets broken down okay so the atp synthase provides a transmembrane channel 
through which facilitated diffusion of protons across the membrane takes place why we are saying it as facilitated because it is supported by a protein a transmembrane protein which is called as a atp synthase and diffusion as we know that from the higher concentration to the lower concentration of molecules the movement takes place so here the higher concentration of protons is in the lumen of the thylakoid and low in the stroma of the chloroplast hence the movement of protons from the lumen towards the stroma takes place so the atp synthase enzyme consists of two parts we have seen cf0 embedded in the thylakoid membrane and forms a transmembrane channel that carries out facilitated diffusion of protons across the membrane and cf1 it protrudes on the outer surface of the thylakoid membrane on the side that faces the stroma so the breakdown of the gradient provides enough energy to cause a conformational change in the cf1 particle of the atp synthase which makes the enzyme synthesize several molecules so atp now these atp molecules which are generated during this process where are they ultimately used they are used in the biosynthetic reaction in the first lecture we have seen that light reaction has two parts that uh, uh, two parts the one is photochemical phase and the another one is biosynthetic phase the photochemical phase involves the light reaction which occurs in the thylakoid membrane of the uh, chloroplast while the biosynthetic reaction occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast so biosynthetic meaning what a biomolecule is synthesized and what that biomolecule is it is a carbohydrate so this carbohydrate molecule generation requires some energy and that energy is provided by a molecule of atp which is adenosine triphosphate and from where these atp molecules are coming from they are coming from the cyclic and non cyclic photophosphorylation which are occurring in the photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 and these photosystems where are they present they are present in the thylakoid membrane okay so this biocentric reaction requires atp for the fixing of carbon dioxide and synthesizing sugar molecules so fixing of co2 and synthesis of sugars so we know the overall reaction of photosynthesis that carbon dioxide with water molecule in the presence of chlorophyll and sunlight synthesize sugar molecule or carbohydrate plus release oxygen so this sugar molecule is synthesized during the biosynthetic reaction of the photosynthesis in the next lecture we will study about the kelvin cycle so for getting more videos you have to uh, like share and subscribe my channel without subscribing you won't be able to get more videos so please do like share and subscribe my channel okay this is all for today we will meet again in the next lecture take care and bye